welcome to the another episode of world of physics now in the chapter of magnetism we are going to discuss about the bh curve that is the hysteresis loop and depending on that we are going to classify the types of magnets there are the soft magnets and the hard magnets so for the soft magnets we are going to see how the soft magnets are classified what is the use what are the applications and what are the properties of the soft magnet the same thing is going to be discussed for the hard magnet so without wasting any time let's go further towards the bh curve or hysteresis loop so as you can see in the figure the vertical y axis indicates the magnetic flux density b and the x axis indicates the magnetic field strength h starting from the origin point with the increase in the magnetic field strength flux density increases as indicated by the curve od as you can see in the figure the curve od represents that with the increase in the magnetic field strength the flux density increases now if we start from the point d let us think in a reverse position that we have to follow one complete path okay so starting from point d if what happens if we reduce magnetic field strength ideally the curve should go in the backward direction and the magnetic field uh, density should become zero reverse path should be followed but in actual condition reverse path is not followed and another different path is followed o uh, sorry de as shown in figure by the blue line so you can see over here a reverse path de is followed rather than do okay so means when now the magnetic field strength h is zero there is some residual flux is retaining over here that is known as the remanence or the retaining uh, retaining flux density or uh, residual flux density as you can see it is given by the line segment oe what are the value of oe is there on the y axis that is the residual flux now what happens if you further go on decreasing the value of the magnetic field in the uh, magnetic field strength h this curve ef is obtained means at this point f <clears throat> at a point f we know that magnetic flux density has now become zero but the negative magnetic field strength h has been obtained so that is known as a corrosive force or corrosivity force okay so whatever the negative side of h is obtained that is the corrosive force okay now further decreasing it will go to the point g further decrease in magnetic field strength it will go up to the point g where the rules similarly follows that with the decrease in magnetic field strength the magnetic flux density decreases now from point g if you go on increasing the magnetic field strength it will follow the path g to the i as shown by the red color line it will follow the path g to the i where with the increase in magnetic field strength the magnetic flux density increases now if you further increase the same rule is obeyed and the curve path from i to j is obtained okay and further increasing it will reach up to the point d so as you can see the whole loop has now been completed so the definition of hysteresis is like that the relationship between the magnetic field strength and the flux density for the particular magnetic material drawn on the graph for the complete one cycle is known as a hysteresis loop or the hysteresis curve so for a particular curve the value of oe as we have said okay it is nothing but the measure of retentivity or remanence of the material and is known as a remanent or the residual flux density br okay so whatever the oe was that it indicates residual flux density now as we have discussed when h is reversed by reversing the current through the solenoid the b is reduced to zero at point f where h is equals to of okay negative side is there 
So the value of H required to wipe off the residual magnetism is known as the corrosive force Hc and is the measure of corrosivity of the material. Okay, it defines the corrosivity of the material. Now, depending on the type of hysteresis loop, the materials are classified as soft magnetic material and hard magnetic material. So the material in which corrosivity force is very much less, they are known as a soft magnetic material. And the material in which corrosive force is very high, they are known as a hard ferromagnetic material. So the ferromagnetic material can be subclassified as two parts, soft and hard. So we are going to discuss them step by step. So let us first of all talk about the soft ferromagnetic material. So the soft materials are characterized by a small hysteresis area and easy domain wall movement in the presence of external magnetic field. These material can be easily magnetized and demagnetized, but they can be not made permanently magnetized. Okay, so they cannot be made permanently magnetized. Whereas on the other hand, hard magnetic materials can be made as permanent magnet. So let us first of all discuss about the properties of the soft ferromagnetic materials. So this magnetic material can be easily magnetized and demagnetized, but they cannot be made permanently magnetized. Less energy is required to magnetize and demagnetize and soft magnetic material is obtained by applying some less magnetic force. These are used to make electromagnets. The examples of soft magnetic materials are iron silicon alloy, ferrous nickel alloy, iron cobalt alloy hysteresis loss and low corrosivity are there. Okay, low hysteresis loss and low corrosivity. These materials have large value of permeability and susceptibility. Okay, so the applications of soft magnetic materials are as they are widely used for construction of cores of electrical rotating machines, transformers and for making electromagnets, reactors, relays. Soft magnetic materials are mostly used where changing magnetic flux is associated. Such a magnetic flux core of electro electric motor alternator, DC generator, electrical transformer, protractor relay, inductors, etc. They are also used for making a path for flux in a permanent magnetic motors. They are used for magnetic shielding, electromagnetic pole piece to attractive uh, to activate the solenoid switch, soft magnetic materials are used. Permanent magnetic uh, permanent magnet uses soft magnetic material to make a path for a flux line. Okay, so in order to make the magnetic material uh, magnetic flux pass through the hard magnetic material, inside them soft magnetic materials are used. Okay. Now let us talk about hard magnetic. Materials. So these magnetic materials cannot be easily magnetized and demagnetized, but they can be made permanently magnetized. Hard magnetic materials have large hysteresis loss due to the high hysteresis loop area, small initial permeability, relatively low permeability and susceptibility. These materials have high corrosivity and retinivity, hence cannot be easily magnetized and demagnetized. The examples are alnico alloy, copper nickel iron alloy, copper nickel cobalt alloy. Okay. Alnico is aluminum nickel copper uh, cobalt. Okay. So the applications of hard magnetic materials are hard magnetic materials have large hysteresis loop area and consequently large energy loss cycle okay, of magnetization and are used in making all kinds of instruments and device requiring permanent magnets. Automotive applications are there. They are used for motor drives, for fans, wipers, injection pumps, starter motors, windows, etc. In telecommunication, microphones, loudspeaker, telephone ringers, etc. are used as a permanent magnet and thus the hard magnetic materials are used. The hard magnetic materials or permanent magnets are also used in data processing, in printers, stacking motors, 
disk drivers and actuators. So this was all about the hysteresis loop and the hard and soft magnetic material depending on the hysteresis loop. So that was all about the chapter of magnetism. That's it for today guys. Thanks for watching.